Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Katie, I'm a mixed media artist, and in today's video I'm going to be talking all about the Derwin Inktense products. So I did work with Derwin in the summer, but this isn't a sponsored video. I just really love using these to create a lot of texture and vibrancy in my sketchbook. I know sometimes, and I know it was the same for me, it can be a little bit daunting for getting new art supplies, and I wasn't really sure when I got these on how I could apply them with my style. So I started experimenting and I feel like I've really found a good way of using them and really embracing play in my sketchbook. So I'm going to be sharing a few different ways that you can use them. So first up is to apply them dry straight to your page. And I'm using a Royal Talons art creation sketchbook today and I find that it's really nice smooth paper so it works really well for the Doe and Inktense products. You do have to be a little bit careful with this paper because it's only 140 GSM, so it doesn't take a huge amount of wet media, but I find it handles the way that I apply the dough and ink tent absolutely fine, and it means I can layer things on top and there's no issues there. You can see that I'm using a mix of the XL ink tent blocks and the smaller ones, and I'm using the different sides of them to create lots of different texture on my page. You can use the side of the block, so the longer edge, so you're getting more coverage on the page, or you can use the edges of the end, which gives you really precise lines. I find that this is just a nice way to block out the colours, so I'm creating this spread based on some images I took when I was in Vienna and I visited the Palm House, and there was just so much colour and life in those pictures that I really wanted to try and get that down on my sketchbook page. So by starting like this, it does help me stay really loose. I haven't sketched first and I can just put down the block colours that I see on the photo into my sketchbook. And I'm not trying to replicate the reference precisely. I'm trying to just focus on the energy and the colours and put down the basic block shapes first. So I also have the set of 100 Derwin Inktense pencils and I'm just pulling out a few different colours, mostly greens, because I really want to layer up all the different shades to try and show all the different plants that were in the palm house. There were a lot of different colours so it does help, but you can also intermix the colours together to create new shades, so don't worry if you don't have all the colours, it's really not necessary. So you can see I do apply quite a lot of pressure, but on some areas where I want it a little bit more subtle, that's where I've pressed a little less hard. I'm also using the pencils in different ways in terms of holding them, so sometimes I'll hold them along the edge of the barrel, which gives me a little bit less control, which is really helpful for when I am trying to be loose. You can see I'm kind of using it at a really low angle here, which really helps to put more coverage on the page, or of course you can use them like a normal pencil and really get the details there. But at this point, it does look like quite a bit of a mess on the page, so I definitely recommend trusting the process because you'll see in a minute how it really comes to life. So our next step is to add water, and I'm just using a size 12 round paintbrush here, but you can also use a water brush pen or smaller brushes. I just find that the size 10 and size 12 brushes really allow me to stay loose and not be super defined with the details but it does also give me enough precision because it does taper to that fine point if I need to go around things and try and be a little bit more careful. So this is where the Derwent Ink Tent really does come into its own. When you put the colours down, it might not be as vibrant as you expect, but when you add the water, the pigments really, really shine, and I find that it's just a really fun way to create. Obviously when I usually put down my gouache or acrylic, it's a very different process because here I put it down dry and it's kind of, it just feels more playful and I really enjoy using the Derwent Ink Tents because it does loosen me up and it just feels like I'm having fun in my sketchbook. This one actually started as a warm up and I ended up just having too much fun and spending an hour or so filling this spread just because I was really having a great time and I feel like that shows in the final artwork too. Just like with the pencils, I'm using the brush in different ways, so that again creates lots of different texture. I'm using the end of the paintbrush for some of the lines, just to try and show some of like the palm fronds. And I'm also pushing it down quite hard, so I can use the length of the bristles, just to try and soften some of those marks that I already put down with the Inktense blocks. I'm not putting a huge amount of water on my brush because again this paper can't really handle it but for wetting the pigment that I've already got on the page is perfectly fine. I started with the blue because I didn't want that to be too muddy. 
I probably should have moved on to the flowers before the greens because it did turn out a little bit muddy and that's something that you kind of have to think about because all the pigments sort of merge together. So my water was a little bit dirty and I think you can tell on these bits down the bottom but it wasn't really an issue for me because like I said I am trying to keep things loosened. I'm not trying to get it super perfect or as it was in the picture. So I'm just going around the page and adding the water to the areas I've got the pigment. You don't need to cover the page fully because the pigment is so strong and very vibrant that you can fill a huge amount of white space with just a little bit of the colour that you've put down. Especially where I've gone really heavy with the marks, it only needs a little bit of water on the paintbrush to really push that out and fill more space. So now I'm using the pencil and I'm putting it on top of the wet page and it really softens the lead, it creates a really nice soft line and it's one of my favourite ways to use the ink tents. The water doesn't sink in immediately on this paper because it's not cotton, so because it sits on the top it does mean that you have a little bit more playtime with the wetness on the page and it really does soften the lead nicely. Another effect that I really enjoy using with the Derwin Inktense pencils is to dip the lead itself and the top of the pencil straight into the water. It's not officially recommended because it is a wooden pencil and so it does weaken the barrel of the pencil that holds the lead but for me I find that it's just a really fun way to use them and so I'm not too worried because this is just how I find my creativity and I really enjoy using it in that way. So for me it's worth it just to try and get some of that different texture and I much prefer using the pencils like this than I do dry. You can see here the really rough line. I find that that's not something I can get with any other pencils, any other watercolour pencils I've tried, and again I really like the intensity of the pigment. Texture is something I'm always trying to get in my work and I feel like this really ticks the bill. I don't often use line work but when I do this would be my go-to just because of that different texture. So again I'm working around my page, you can see where I've dipped it in and the water is kind of sitting on the top there. But if you're not sure about dipping your actual pencils in, then I do think just wetting the page and going on top with the pencil and letting the lead soften like that is also a really good option. Another way you can use these pencils is to put down your marks and then come in with your finger and wet the page so it really smudges the colour. You can either wet your finger first by dipping that into the water, which is what I've done here, which means you're wetting the pigment and can fill more of the surface area, or you can smudge it down on top of the wet paper with a dry finger and then you've got a little bit more control. One of the techniques that I discovered was that if you use the wet finger method is that you can then go on top with your pencil and kind of scratch it away. So I feel like the texture opportunities and the amount of ways you can use these pencils and with layering is really endless and I'm constantly discovering new ways that I can use them. I didn't do much of the scratching in method on this page but I think it would be really useful for other subjects. So I'm just going around the page still with my pencil, you can see that I'm still using the dip effect where the water has really softened the lead and I'm filling in around the background with the leaves and trying to define some of these areas a bit more. I don't have a set method so I'm kind of just coming in and adding to it where I think it needs some more, coming with my finger and softening some of the marks and also coming in towards the bottom just to try and define some other elements like the flowers. I really enjoy adding little swatches to my page so I'm doing that here and I found that you could even just dip the ink tense block straight into the water too so I did that for the green one and I did it for the pink at the end here and it really changes the feeling of them. Where I put them down dry they feel more like a pastel or a crayon whereas dipping them into the water really makes it feel more like paint. So the next way that you can use them is to actually grate them and use it as paint. Unfortunately my memory card corrupted so I don't have any footage of me actually grating the ink tents blocks so I'll pop a little bit in here where I've used it before from a different project. But I just used the edge of a scalpel knife and put some of the pigment straight into this white paint palette. You can see the thickness, I kind of made it more like gouache at this point but if you add more water then it's a little bit more like watercolour. One of the things with ink tents is once you've put down your layer 
and let it dry fully, it won't reactivate. So it's not quite the same as gouache, but I do find the consistency is, and I found it really fun to work with. You can see here I'm playing with the wet on wet technique and that creates more texture, again playing with the line and mark making of my paintbrush. I really loved creating the paint using the grating effect and putting some pigment into my palette. You can obviously mix your own colours this way, so for the Dough and Ink Tense XL blocks I only had the larger primary colours, but I can mix a huge amount of different colours by doing it in this way in my palette. And I think that's really handy. So again, I'm trying to put down some sort of palm trees, some of the fronds and all the different leaves that were in this reference. And then another way you can use it as sort of paint is to actually use it as a dry pan color. So you can see here, I'm applying water straight onto the stick and then I can use it like that. So kind of like it's a watercolor pan palette. I'm just wetting my brush first and then applying it on top. And it can get a little bit messy if you are sort of mixing between the colours, so I try to just stick with the browns. I do come in later with the yellow, and you'll see it does get a little bit of green on it, so if you want to keep them super clean and neat, then maybe this effect isn't for you, and perhaps the grating would work better. But this is more like watercolour because you are using more water onto the stick. Here I am using it on the XL sticks, but there's loads of different ways to use these, and I thought this was a really fun method. One thing that I didn't show in this piece was that you can put down the blocks onto a paint palette and mix it up that way. So again, you can have a bit more control of the colours you use. So instead of necessarily directly putting it onto your sketchbook spread, you could do it onto a paper palette and mix it up that way rather than straight onto your page. So again, I'm just coming in with a mix of the different blocks and the pencils. Here I've wet the paper first and I'm using the dough and ink tense block straight on top. You can really see how it softens it there and then I'm coming straight in on top with the smudging effect with my finger just to soften some of the edges. It creates a lot of depth and I really like using the darker colours to create more contrast and also adding pattern to this page. It kind of goes a little bit more abstract because I am looking at the reference less and less. But I did want to add on some more obvious ferns and plants, so I've wet the dough and ink tents block here, and I started to draw in one of the plants. I wanted to fill around it, so I'm just coming in with some colour on my paintbrush, and you can kind of see where it does pick up some of the colour, because it's not completely dry, from the little plant that I've started drawing. But I find that using this water-soluble medium is really fun and creates loads of different textures. I dipped the ink tense block directly in the water, which is why it's coming out so thick and creating that really lovely texture. This was something I tried on this page that I hadn't done before and I really enjoyed it, so definitely something I'm going to do more of. Here I'm smudging again and I actually wet my finger and put it straight onto the ink tense block and then onto the page to create that blue and I thought that was a really nice gradient over there. Sometimes I'll put water down on the page and then come in with an ink tense block or I'll dip the ink tense block in water. I feel like there's loads of different opportunities and although I've only spoken about a few of them today, I really encourage you having a play and just seeing what happens. Like I said, I planned for this to be a warm up and then I was just having so much fun playing. And for me, that's what sketchbook work is all about. Art should just be about enjoyment and play and having fun and not necessarily about creating beautiful work at the end of it, but just having a good time and being mindful and creating something that made us happy. I've used mostly dough and ink tense blocks so far and now I'm coming in with my pencils, again to add more layers and add on texture. I really love the effect of these when I've dipped them in water, so you can see that I smudged it a little bit, and I'm just trying to be really loose with my lines. I feel like this looks like gouache here because it's so thick, so you can really create watery effects or you can create thicker ones depending on how much pigment you use from the blocks. So for this paint I've created, I've just grated in more pigment to my palette and less water to mix it up so it's slightly thicker. The way I like to finish my pieces is with some final touches of vibrant colour and for this one it was more pink so I enjoyed dipping that into the water and adding it on top. 
You can see that it does layer really well and obviously it does depend on what color you're using so perhaps a yellow wouldn't layer as well but I really like finishing off my pieces with just that little pop of color. And here's the final spread. So I really hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did enjoy creating it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I use Derwin Inktense blocks and pencils in my work and if you do have any Inktense materials yourself then hopefully this has inspired you to just go and have a play and see what happens. A huge thank you for watching and a big thank you to my patrons for all of their support. I hope you have a creative week and I will see you next Sunday with my new YouTube video. See you later!